That guy, I mean, this guy right here, <clears throat> High Defamation Television, back again with another video. This time, we're looking at what I picked up on my vacation. I'm still currently on vacation. It's not even, I could have more by the end of the week. I probably won't. I'm trying to be good, especially after the last four or five days. Uh, this past weekend, Friday night, Hauled ass down to Portland area uh, in Oregon to visit some dear friends who I haven't seen for longer than a few hours a couple times since pre-pandemic. Uh, I think it's been about three or four years since I went down to the last spot they were living in down in, in the Portland area. Um, anyway, they, they bought a house. I was invited down for the weekend. Got down there Friday night hung out Saturday, hit up some record shops, had some food, saw some roller derby, drank some beers, ate some edibles, but most importantly, spent time with two of the best people. Um, at any rate, that's neither here nor there. Uh, like I said, did some record shopping. Always do some record shopping in Portland. Next to Seattle, Portland is like, probably got more record shops than the Seattle area. And we have some fucking good ones up here. Uh, but Portland has a couple great ones. Uh, went to a new one over the weekend. I went to two specifically. One I always go to every time in PDX. Um, the other one, new to me. Uh, I don't know how long it's been there. I forgot to ask. Uh, I want to say it's popped up in the last year or two um, during... COVID times, um, you know, COVID times. Is there going to be a time after COVID? COVID's, COVID's here to stay. Hate to tell you. Um, like the flu. I digress. Saturday, record shopped. First place we went to, a spot called City Noise. Like I said, fairly new shop. New to me, never been in there before. Neither my homie. Um, Pick this gem up along with another shirt and a couple little knickknacks that we're not going to talk about. It's not a shirt or knickknack channel for the most part. Uh, we're talking about records. So I grabbed a couple records as well from City Noise. Um, a lot of records in there, especially for the square footage of this shop. Um, one of the appeals of this particular record store is that it really caters to the niche, niches of music that I'm typically hunting for when I go out. Um, so the first thing I picked up, this Horror Vacui record. Now I've talked about this band before, I believe. Um, Italian, if I'm not mistaken, or Greek. It's hard to keep track of where the bands doing this sound uh, are coming from these days. Uh, this was released, ironically, I picked up at City Noise, but was released by Blackwater Records, the other shop that I went to. So we'll be talking about them soon enough. Here's the back. Came with this very nice, limited, screen-printed poster. Or fold, just a fold-over for the cover if, if, you, if you want. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do with it. Uh, this record also uh, came out on a very nice pure white vinyl um what do you get with this particular band what does it sound like it's death rock fucking goth um some real sick gothy death rock it's not like uh when i say goth uh quite on the um say christian death or Susie or dead can dance sort of level 
think more, at least with this particular record, they got a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more, uh, dare I say, progressive sounding uh, on um, the, the most recent LP, which is the one I was mostly familiar with prior to picking this up. Um, on this, they sound almost like that mid-era cult, uh, say, love or electric era um, at times, um, hearkening back to death cult, southern death cult before that. Um, very upbeat, but also very downbeat, if you know what I mean. Uh, great fucking record. Not one I've ever seen in the wild uh, or even actually seen available uh, on the internet, but it's been a little while since I've looked. Um, this was a no-brainer. I saw it, had to snag it. The other record I picked up from City Noise, the brand new Savage Heads LP. Uh, this was just released, uh, ironically recorded as far back as 2019. Uh, this is the back cover. This was put out through Social Napalm and distributed exclusively by Sorry State Records. Um, they did a weird, a weird rollout for this record. Uh, basically, there was no pre-order available for this thing. Uh, however, record stores were allowed to pre-order said record in order to have it stocked on release date. Um, I didn't know if I was going to see it at my local uh, for as far as the, like, for the punk shit singles going steady. Didn't know if they'd have it. Um, and I, honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it, but I was flipping through the new arrivals at City Noise and this popped up and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be going home with that for sure. What do you get with this record? You get... 13 tracks of just raw, hardcore, like with a mix of street punk. And when I say street punk, I mean that like, dare I say Oregon style of like resist. Uh, maybe um, some callbacks to um, defiance to a certain degree, but I really get a resist vibe um, or like say an Alice Rotten vibe from the Savage Heads LP. Um, crucial, crucial release. De definitely going to pop up again on the 2022 year end list for sure. Um, came with, I already put it away. Look at, look at me. Um, if you care, and I'm not, I don't know. Do I usually do this shit? Sometimes. Sometimes I don't because I'm not thinking about it. Came with a nice booklet as well, which houses lyrics and such what can i say awesome record again you'll be seeing it into the year 2022 list one of the best punk records i've heard to date this year um right there with like the new night feeder stellar now speaking of new releases after city noise we cruised on down to blackwater and blackwater has been a record shop that i have tried visiting Every time in Portland, since I can remember the first time going to Portland for just shits and giggles, um, within like the last 10 years, that is. Um, Blackwater is a cool shop. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's set up, it looks a lot like uh, some kid's fucking basement. Um, it's actually a lot better organized this last time than the last few times I've been in there. Um, always a shit ton of stuff to look through at Blackwater. Now, one of the things I was there for specifically was a copy of, yes, the new Hellshock. Haven't gotten copies up this far north yet. And because I knew this trip to Portland was inevitable, uh, I didn't want to pick it up on the internet prior to my trip. And they had plenty of copies still, although from what they were saying, selling out really quick. Um, Blackwater is really fucking on the money this year, man. They have had some stellar releases. Uh, they just put out the new Long Knife. That's available, I think, for pre-order now. Um, maybe not even pre-order. I think you can just order it. Uh, and that's fucking, what I've heard off of that is stellar as well. Now, Hellshock have been a longtime favorite of mine. Um, one of my favorite shows of all time. They played with uh, Crude SS. 
That was uh, about 20, 2015, I believe. 2015, 2016, somewhere right around there. Uh, this is their first album in like 13 years. Uh, somewhere along those lines. And, I mean, just take in that cover art. If you're getting a strong bolt thrower in battle, there is no law vibe from that cover art. Um, it's not without reason. There is a, as on a lot of these crust records, a heavy, heavy bolt thrower influence present on this album. Um, bordering on just pure death metal at times. Um, and Hellshock has always traditionally kind of just stayed in that territory of crust, like SDS indebted, um, yeah, that just crusty, sludgy, mid-paced steamroller uh, uh, of, of a punk subgenre. Uh, they get real deathy, death metally. They The death metals, they really get into that shit on this record. More than I think they have on any record to date that they put out, whether LP or EP or split. Um, just a stellar fucking album. I saw them live... Uh, they headlined with Night Feeder, um, and it was the Night Feeder uh, release par album release party for the Rip Cut Off All of the Your Face, uh, the new the new LP. They hadn't yet gotten copies of this. This was back June, I want to say, like the first week of June, give or take. Um, this record's awesome. Worth the trip by itself. Now... Often, when I'm at record shops, I experience a lot of what you would call synchronicity. Now, at Blackwater, uh, the synchronicity came into play because recently I was on a, a heavy metallurgy stream with Marty Worm, as well as Mike from Uncommon Power, and we talked about crossover. And one of the records Mike showed was this one, Mission of Christ. And this is a compilation entitled Silence and Grave. This, I fucking love that cover. This record is glossy as fuck, by the way. Uh, there's the band. Track listing, some credits. Love the logo. Mission of Christ. Uh, this record also came with a fucking 7-inch. How's that for bang for your buck? With an additional four tracks on the seven inch. And what you get with this album is just some stellar Canadian crossover thrash. Excellent booklet in here um, with interviews, tons of interviews, photos like this gem. One of the cool things featured in this um, is this page of flyers print it up. Check this one out. Right here. DOA? No means no? Mission of Christ? The same show? What the fuck? You got one here with attitude adjustments. Just fucking stellar. You got another one here. MDC on the bill. Atrocity. God. Here's one with the fucking accused right here. Now, as far as this band goes, Mike really described it very well um, on the stream. There is a big accused vibe going on with this record. Um, and actually, I hear a lot of COC on this record. Eye for an eye, animosity era, COC. This record's heavy as fuck. Like, not only is it fast and thrashy, it is burly. Um, just a killer, released by Supreme Echo. I think this comp came out uh, 2019 uh, is when it dropped. And um, I hadn't been seeing it when it came out at any US distros. Um, and I just ended up kind of having it fall off my radar till Mike reminded me. So thank you, Mike, Mr. Uncommon Power. 
Also, while at Blackwater, I managed to snag this reissue, which I was very excited about getting. And that would be Escorbuto with Las Mas Macabras de las Vidas. Now, I forgot to look it up, but I've been trying to refresh my Spanish. Um, the most miserable day of your life. I believe that's the translation. Roughly. I might be not 100% on that, but I'm close. First of all, killer cover. Escorbuto right there. If you're not familiar with Escorbuto, they were a long-running Spanish punk band. Um, very hard to pigeonhole as far as what you get sound-wise on any of their given records. It, it, it really kind of runs the gamut uh, and super varies depending on the era. This was released in 1988 originally, I believe. Uh, and it's just an excellent intersecting of hardcore, done Spanish style, straight up rock and roll. Um, there are callbacks to death rock on here that are stellar. It just works super well. It's just a killer record. It's super dark super nihilistic and just angry the vitriol on this record is like palpable you could cut it with a butter knife when you're listening to this thing awesome punk album so happy to have a, a copy of this reissue now a bunch of their records did get reissued this was the one that uh i was super excited about seeing there on the shelf at blackwater and that's the third item grabbed from blackwater now when i got home um, uh, one of the first things I did was go to, uh, one of my locals, because I'm used to hitting a few of my locals up basically every weekend. Uh, and this was kind of on my mind. I started thinking about it on Saturday and I don't know why that was. I think I saw something, um, by, um, I saw something that re reminded me of this record and reminded me I didn't have it, um, and then I hadn't seen it in a physical brick and mortar in a really long time. So uh, after flipping through a bunch of stuff at uh, said local, uh, I found this album, the first Warfare Noise compilation put out originally by Kogumelo. This is a Gray Haze licensed reissue from like a bunch of years ago. Um, I just kind of missed the boat. 2014 is when this reissue came out. And I missed the boat on this reissue. Um, and then there was a common one that was this, but it was a double LP with a bunch of additional tracks. You all know how I feel about putting in a second record when only one is necessary and then adding a bunch of additional tracks, especially when they're not representative of what the album entailed when it originally came out. This is the version to get, in my opinion. You've got two tracks by Chuckle one of the most infamous Brazilian thrash bands. I mean, these are all Brazil bands. Um, initially all put out by Cogumelo. You got Sarcophago, two tracks. Mutilator, another two tracks. And Holocausto, two tracks. And dare I say, the best material by all four of these bands that they ever did. Uh, all on one album. So it's pretty stoked to find this. And it was cheap. Uh, that was another thing that I was super stoked about. So that was like the first thing I did when I got home. Um, I of course also had mail waiting. And this was something I ordered a while back, a few weeks back, uh, when I saw it was a thing that was happening. Um, I don't buy a lot of listenable reissues. And part of my issue with, with the listenable reissues um, is not necessarily the sound quality. It's generally the lack of care that they put into reproducing cover art. More often than not, when I look at one of those listenable reissues, whether it's like the Malevolent Creations they did a few years ago or the Suffocations that they did, you know, either prior to or just after those Malevolent Creation reissues, pixelated, art looks like it was blown up from a CD, inlay card, just no, no good. 
Um, and they did a reissue of this album a few years back, and I never picked it up. But I don't even remember why I managed to happen upon this. I found out that Music on Vinyl, of all companies, uh, was releasing a new edition of this kind of legendary record, um, and probably in my top five full-length LPs from the new wave of British heavy metal. And that would be the first Satan album, Court in the Act. First of all, the cover reproduction, stellar. It looks crisp as fuck. No pixels. Awesome. And that artwork just is killer. True to the original back. Uh, it is a dupe of the um, Roadrunner edition or was it road racer at the time um came on a very nice gold lp with the old school roadrunner logo on there to match what the record looked like um and of course it came with a very nice insert with a collage collage and lyrics um i love this fucking record um i know some people would be very quick to say that Kiss of Death is better uh, material by Satan. Uh, and I love that EP. In fact, um, I had thought that they had a copy of that at Blackwater. I, I, I scoped a little bit on the internet, uh, but they did not have one to be found in the store when I was there, um, that Kiss of Death EP, unfortunately. Um, but that material, that first Satan record, just smokes. In my opinion, as close to a perfect record as I've heard for New Wave, New Wave of British Heavy Metal. Um, so that came in the mail. This came in the mail as well. Acid with the Black Car Mini LP. Four tracks. This was released between the self-titled Acid album and Maniac, the follow-up, as it has the track Black Car, which did appear on Maniac. Uh, I believe this is 82. Let's see. If I can confirm. I'm not seeing it here, but I'm pretty sure 82 is correct. 83 at the latest. I think Engine Beast was 84. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that was like the third full length by Acid. At any rate, this mini LP <laughs> fucking smokes. It is so good. Um, if, if you're not familiar with Acid, they were from Belgium. They played a very dirty, gross, and kind of sloppy. Uh, John Bip Bop Boom would refer to this as poverty metal. Um, kind of a sloppy rendition of like girl school uh, but way more speed metal indebted um, killer killer ep if it's a mini lp it's an ep in my book black cars is a stellar track drop dead also stellar uh the day you die again stellar exterminator pretty goofy uh but still a good time to be had um yeah i really dig this acid are awesome if you're not familiar with them, I urge you to look into their tunes. Now, more synchronicity. A few weeks back, Metal Theologian was on Metal Heavy Metallurgy with Marty and Alan, and I believe Jurgen uh, was also present on said stream where they were talking about albums they had that were rare, um, that they didn't think a lot of other people in the VC had. One of the records Aaron showed has been a record that's been on my want list for a very long time. Um, I first became aware of this album uh, after talking with Aaron about French heavy metal um, and kind of diving into it on my own. Um, I'm pretty resourceful once I'm kind of pointed in a direction when it comes to music. Um, and he hit me up and said, hey man, have you ever uh, stumbled across this record? And he sent me a photo of the record. Um, and I was like, no, I haven't. In fact, that's the first time I've ever seen anything to do with it. And um, he shot me the link to a YouTube video with the record on it. 
and said, I think this is something that you need in your collection at some point. Well, it's a, it was a, it's a, it was an expensive record. So Jim, it was in that realm of like records that I, I will put in my Discogs cart with the intent of buying, if I ever see it go down in price. Um, well, the cheapest they saw it for, it ended up disappearing as far as the listing uh, altogether. Um, but copies appeared back on Discogs from a seller that I purchased from several times. Uh, so I had no hesitation and I went like that on the Discogs, made my purchase. It's this Marikage self-titled album, six tracks of killer, just dirty, sleazy French speed metal. It's like, imagine the first Vulcane record, if it kind of sounded a little bit like ass, um, and you would, you would get this. And I say that in the best way possible. Um, this album is, is easily my top three heavy metal, fr French heavy metal records uh, ever. It's just so killer. I'm so stoked to have a copy of this in the collection. Really fun coming home to this uh, after the weekend and, and opening it up and being able to throw it down on the turntable. Now, the last thing I did upon coming back was, of course, hit up Daybreak Records. Um, talked about them countless times, and I picked this up because it was hella cheap and because I saw like three copies in Portland between uh, City Noise and Blackwater. And then all three, uh, all of those examples were like way overpriced. And that would be this kind of recent bootleg of English Dogs, Mad Punks, and English Dogs. Now there is a legit version of this coming out from Radiation Records, I believe, and they do a good job. Uh, but the price that this costs, it's like nothing. So of course I had to grab it. It's the only thing from like that essential era of English Dogs that uh, I am currently missing. Um, and this is just stellar UK 82 before they went metal, just sick. Um, bootleg sounds nice too. Got no complaints. Um, cover art, that's another story. It's blown the fuck out. Looks like shit. But whatever. It's super early UK 82. And um, yeah, it's great. The other record I snagged from Daybreak is a weird one. I might even throw in a needle drop for this one. I don't know how many people have heard of this or be familiar with it. I'm talking about Andy Anderson's Tribe. Pretty unassuming cover. Um, this was in the punk section. I don't know what compelled me to actually pull it from the shelf. I think it was kind of close inspection. And this has been in, at the Daybreak on the Daybreak shelves for like a while. Um, I looked closer than I had previously at the cover and saw some things that were kind of tells that probably a UK thing. Well, I'm kind of right. I was kind of right. Andy Anderson. Also, I did know the name. Andy Anderson, front man for attitude adjustment. It became just attitude. Um, so I flipped it over and sure enough, put out by Wee Bite, who did the attitude releases and Andy Anderson on vocals. But there are the rest of the band. Now, I don't know if you can read that from where you're sitting. On guitar, we've got Bones. Bones? Hmm. Could that be? Yes. Bones from Discharge and Broken Bones. On drums, Baz. Another bell. Baz, also Broken Bones and Discharge. Bass, Audi. Again, same fucking group of people playing... A, a, a record with Andy from Attitude Adjustment. Um, how could it be bad? Well, it's not 100% great, but the stuff that is great just fucking rules. Um, it is thrashy, crossover, came out in 1988. Um, so it's like right around the uh, Trader and Death era of Broken Bones. And then, uh, you know, the Attitude EP and that, that compilation that came out. Um, a lot of it's just straight up crossover thrash, which kills. Um, if you're familiar with that attitude era of attitude adjustment, um, or say Trader and Death, Broken Bones, even 
FOAD, the studio side of FOAD. Um, you kind of be, be able to probably place in your head what this sounds like, but it's way more just metallic thrash metal. There's also a little bit of cock rock in there, which is why it's not 100% great. Sometimes Andy's vocals are... are Sometimes he made some questionable decisions with what he was going to do with his vocals on this album. Um, but yeah, it's stellar. I am going to do a needle drop on this one just because like, it's one of those odd rarities that you find that you weren't looking for, but you're super hyped that you stumbled across. Um, I collect this kind of shit, so from the UK at this time, um, especially if it's Broken Bones related, just was like choice. Um, so yeah, we're going to hear a needle drop. Hope you dig it. Then we're going to talk about a few 45s and then I'm going to peace out. <laughs> Got some 45s to talk about from Daybreak as well. We're just going to kind of speed through these. Um, these have all kind of been on like a want list at some point or another. And I just never grabbed them because it's like, I always find other shit to get. But you had them in the used bin. They were cheap. So here we are. 8 Ball. This is a metal punk released on Warthog Speak Records. Killer. Motorhead, Motorhead Worship. A little bit of that genocide sound. If you're into that, there's nothing you will not like about this 8-Ball EP. The rules. Also picked up from La Vida and Moose. This Blazing Eye EP. More stellar, savage, feral, vitriolic, fucking hardcore, modern hardcore. Killer. Beach Impediment Records. Ajax. And their first 7-inch, if I'm not mistaken, their first. I want to say dudes from this band are also involved in, like, the Imploders. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Uh, this is just rad. Rad punk. Love it. Also, that cover is just killer. Super trippy. Here's another kind of psychedelic man record cover. This is from the band Frenzy. Their EP, Noisy Trouble. And if that looks like Crash or Cross to you, eh, you'd be kind of right. They're a Portland band. Used to be the band Nervous Gade, who I like a whole lot. Um, Frenzy sound a lot like Nervous Gade, which is, you know, makes sense because it's basically the same band. Um, a lot of tracks, a lot of distortion, a lot of feedback, a lot of yelling. Record smokes. Can't complain. That is my vacation haul. We're about to hit almost 35 minutes, so I'm going to peace out for now. Thank you for tuning in and for watching. Um, engage me down below. Get involved in the conversation. What do you think of this shit? Does it matter? I don't know. You leave a comment, I'll respond. I always fucking do. Um, that said, don't be shitty. Take care of yourselves. Later.